Well, we'll talk about the signings in just a, just a moment. Just a brief synopsis. You've got the write-ups on each of the players, but I just uh, you know want to uh, make a general statement of how much uh, I really enjoyed recruiting this year. This was uh, a fun year, a fun year to do this. We have such a great place to sell, a great city, one of the finest uh, facilities, to, uh, home facilities to play uh, play a football game in. Uh, and I think uh, the, the team that puts this all together, you talk about academics, you talk about our strength team, you talk about our, 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 uh, our medical team, and you go on and on and on, and, and then you get into our, our, our full academic team. It's just a, just really a terrific group. To I think they did just a phenomenal job of, of helping them. This was their weekends. They had weekends, several weekends, uh, January and, uh, and uh, in, in December. They were taking up recruiting, and they were very, very uh, upfront and did it and did a phenomenal job. They brought energy, and they brought uh, expertise to the table. But uh, most of all, I really want to thank our assistant coaches and our office staff, uh, the job that they've done. Uh, you know, you very seldom hear about your coaches when you're out on the road, but I can't tell you the number of times other coaches stop me from other schools and say, well, coach, you guys are doing a great job, man. They're working, they're out, they're this and that. And it's always great to hear. And you go to schools and uh, they say, boy, I tell you, so-and-so is a real professional, does a great job, man. He can come back to my school anytime he wants to. And those are the type of things you like to hear. And those are the type of people we have on our, our staff. And really appreciate our assistant coaches and the job they did of evaluating, working hard to recruit, and uh, bring, bring this class together. I think uh, we have uh, last year we played with 30 red shirt freshmen. We played with 20 true freshmen. And uh, we had uh, two seniors, one started. And uh, we, the, the banquet didn't take long. We just, uh, he got all the awards, we gave him all the awards, and he's gone. <laughs> but uh, I think the thing that, uh, that we realize as a staff and it, that the bar has been raised. We're going to be a Division One team next year, a full whack schedule. We go to Rice. Help us recruit better, what's going to help us coach better. And uh, with these coaches are Division One coaches, and we're recruiting Division One players, and that's uh, that's a very exciting time, a very uh, great place for for us to be. Uh, a little different this year, I think uh, we do have players on campus that came in at midterm. Uh, just just uh, some of these guys: uh, Cody Berry, a defensive back; uh, Tucker Carter, uh, quarterback. And I'll talk about these guys a little more in a, in a moment. But William Cavanaugh from uh, Canyon High School, New Braunfels Canyon. Will's uh, just graduated early; he's here now. Uh, Jordan Gray was a gray shirt. Now, mo many of you, most of you probably know what a gray shirt is, but that's a young man that, that uh, we didn't sign. We signed him with the class, but he didn't start school. He didn't start school till now. He is here now. He actually gets an additional year to play. And uh, so that's really a great signee for us. Jordan came, was a quarterback. He was a wide receiver, a tight end. He's, uh, I think, six, uh, about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and 250 now. And uh, he's, he's rocked up pretty good. Uh, Brent Guerrero from uh, from California Junior College and uh, and Brian King from uh, the uh, Junior College in uh, Hutch, Kansas. But we have I think 17 players from Texas. We try to do what we said we we're going to do. Work from from San Antonio out. We have five uh, area players from here. We have uh, five from the Dallas area. We have five from the Houston area and two from East Texas. So we really try to do a good job in the state of Texas. We have one from Louisiana, three from California. We have one from Arkansas, and. Uh, I think two from Florida. So, you know, it's a balanced class, offense, defense, and we really are excited about this class. Everybody says that. Boy, man, we had a good year this year. We saw, Has you ever heard anybody of you guys say, man, we had a bad recruiting year this year? Anybody ever say that? No, and they won't, and they won't. Everybody ha always has a great spring practice and a great recruiting year, but l literally we did have an outstanding recruiting year. We're excited, we're excited about our players, but we really try to help ourselves in the offensive line. We've got some size and some athleticism, a little age there, but, you know, Armando Alvarez, Probably Blend Junior College had one of the best offensive lines at that level I've ever seen. And uh, all those guys had a lot of places to go. So we were very excited about Armando, 6'3", 300-pounder. Armando is not here now. He won't be here till the summer. Uh, Cody Berry, I mentioned. Cody Berry played junior college, and he was in California. He was at uh, Pierce Junior College, the same place that Frankie Anaya and, and uh, Brandon Reeves went. But uh, he's from Cedar Hill, Texas, Cedar Hill High School. Uh, Coach Rourke and I were there the other day. They're loaded with talent right now. It's a great high school and great players. And he'll really fit our needs well in the defensive secondary. Uh, Brandon Brinkman, Brandon, uh, I think, has played one year of football. He's 6'6", 250. He's a uh, basketball player. And if you've been around us very long, you kind of know that some of the best football players maybe that don't ever play football are basketball players. I know we had a young man at Ohio State, Ricky Dudley, from East Texas. And Ricky was on the basketball team at Ohio State, never played until his last year, had his last year of eligibility in football, was, was the 14th player picked in the first round by the Oakland Raiders and played, I think, about seven or eight years. So 
those guys normally they can play basketball and they have size. Normally they can play play football. And I, and a guy like LeBron James was a pretty good defensive end too. But maybe he did the right thing. I don't know. But we're really excited about Brandon because I think he does have a tremendous upside. Uh, Tucker Carter, uh, Tucker Carter, quarterback from Trinity Valley, uh, from Allen High School. His dad is the strength coach and assistant coach and strength coach at Allen High School. Uh, I asked his dad, I said, what do you think Tucker's best quality is? He said, coach, he's a team guy. He's a team guy. He's a winner. And I said, I think that, you know, that, that probably means more than what I'm going to say because I think one of his best qualities, he, he throws everything catchable, throws a catchable ball. You know, people talk about arm strength and all that good stuff, but, but you look at the Joe, the, the, the Joe Montanas and, and, and the, the Bradys, all those guys, probably arm strength is not their strength. But he throws a tremendously catchable ball. He's a tough guy. He's a winner. He's from a great high school. He's a 60%-plus passer, uh, threw for 2,600 yards, 26 touchdowns. He's Offensive Player of the Week on October 31st. And that was the day that uh, he had accounted for almost 400 yards. And I had four, he threw four touchdown passes and ran for three touchdowns. I will take that every week. I'll be happy with that. <laughs> you go to that, uh, Travis. <laughs> but really, a tremendous signing for us. And, and I think, uh, you know, our, our, we have, of course, we have our starting quarterback uh, coming back. There are comments. He's just, we're just going to make each other better. Going to make each other better. And that's the attitude you have to have. And they will. They'll make each other better. And he was the offensive player of the year in their league. Uh, William Cavanaugh. William's here. William's uh, from New Braunfels. And uh, he's an uh, offensive lineman, defensive lineman at, at New Braunfels. He'll probably be an offensive lineman for us. Uh, he graduated early. He's not a junior college player. He graduated early. He's here. I talked to him yesterday. I asked him how things are going. He's loving the weight room. And if you look at the guy, you can tell he loves the weight room. But, uh, but that's kind of exciting. And he's here. He's an all-area player. And, again, he'll be in the offensive line for us. Hopefully at, at offensive center. I think that's probably where he should start out. But, you know, sometimes in the offensive line, they have some value. They can play other places. Cody Cole. Cody's a little bit of a, 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 I think, some of the story for you because Cody's from south, southwest Florida, from, from uh, Fort Myers. Uh, a good friend of mine that played at the University of Miami called me on Cody, told me his work ethic and the type of player he was. We got tape. I liked him. Uh, Coach Marshall liked him. Coach Bush liked him. And we brought him in. He had some other opportunities in South, in south Florida and decided he wanted to come here. And uh, I think he's going to be a good, uh, good signing for it. Good size, 6'4", 275. That's one thing we have gotten. We've gotten better, some size that we need in the offensive line. Tristan Coleman. Tristan, one of the East Texas young men. Tristan is a running back, uh, outstanding prospect. He's uh, Dave, one of the Dave Campbell 300 guys, which that's kind of a prestigious thing in, in, Flor in, in Texas, as you know. He's All-State. He was offensive MVP of his league. Uh, he's a 2,000-yard rusher. And uh, I've only been around a couple of those in my career. One was Barry Sanders and one was Willis McGahey. 2,000 yards is a lot of yards. That's hard to rush for out in the parking lot. A little long when this guy's trying to tackle you. But he's an outstanding prospect and great family. Uh, Zach Conk. Zach is a uh, quarterback from, uh, from Arkansas, played in, in Little Rock. His dad is the head football coach at Central Arkansas. And, uh, you know, I've never, in recruiting, I've never beaten – anybody on it with a girlfriend. I mean, the girlfriend always wins. The girlfriend's at that place, you can forget it. They're, they're gone. But we did beat, uh, we beat a dad on Zach. We stole him away from dad. But, and that's really not true. His dad wanted him to go, out, go outside, and he did. And Zach is, a, uh, out, again, a 60%-plus passer. He uh, was finalist for a player of the year in Arkansas. He got pretty good football in, in Arkansas. He measured here 6'6", six, six, I think 217. Uh, his dad said, list him at 6'5". Six, 6'6", six, six, it sounds gangly to me. List him at 6'5". So we're listening at 6'5 and a half. But a uh, terrific young man. And, and uh, actually his uh, mother also is kind of football knowledgeable. Her, uh, her dad was a coach at McNeese State and several other places. So the, it's, it's a football family, let's put it that way. He yeah, actually, uh, too, I know it's for 2,800 yards and 24 touchdowns. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good day. Uh, Jordan Gray, I think I might have mentioned Jordan earlier. Jordan is here now. We uh, gray shirted Jordan last year. Uh, he's, a t again, as I mentioned, a tight end, a wide receiver. He's, he's uh, whatever, but he's really a good athlete, 6'4", 250, and he's in the weight room. You know, the thing you're concerned about a gray shirt is they just kind of don't do a lot. They kind of get soft. And, but uh, Jordan, is, uh, he's worked out. He looks good, and I think he'll be a good addition for us. Uh, Brandon Guerrero. Brandon is here. He's out of junior college in, in uh, California. He's a uh, linebacker, which we need. He's from Fullerton. He's a first-team all-conference player. It's kind of interesting about Brandon. You know, sometimes uh, some of you guys have a hard time making it 
across campus to class. Brandon drove an hour and a half one way every day to school. Think about that. Kind of makes you want to work at, uh, without an education, doesn't it? Drive an hour and a half a day to school. He did every day. And uh, outstanding football player. And uh, he's a great addition for us. He had, he had opportunities in the Big Ten, some big time leagues. And uh, we're very excited about having Brandon. He uh, also was one of the tutors in the tutoring program and very intelligent young man and, and uh, wants to be, uh, I say he's intelligent, I think he wants to get into coaching and teaching and those type of things. So I don't know how really, really intelligent he is, but I, I think he is. And he'll, be, he'll be great. Zach Hester. Zach was a finalist for the Houston Touchdown Club uh, Scholar Athlete of the Year. Uh, Zach, uh, really quick in his first step, again, size-wise, 6'4", 305. Isn't that amazing? High school kids, 300 pounds. I remember just a little sideline here. When Woody Hayes at Ohio State had a little film of Woody Hayes, and, and they were interviewing him before the season. He said, Coach Hayes, some of your linemen weigh as much as 250 pounds. Can those young men, you think they can stand up and think they can get in shape? And, you know, Woody kind of had, had his kind of gruff answer. But think about that. The linemen were 250 pounds then and 300 pounds now in high school. And the backs now, are, some of them are 250. But Zach's going to be a great uh, signing for us. Again, he's an out, outstanding student. Jalen James. All district player. He's the one kid from Louisiana, and um, he's from Lake Charles. Wide receiver, defensive back, returner. He got a lot of value. He can do a lot of things. And I ran to one of my uh, friends that had coached at Miami and been around Miami a lot, and, and actually been looked at Jalen in recruiting. And uh, he said, "Coach, said this guy, he said he's good. He is really, really good." I said, "Well, he reminds me of Devin Hester. Reminds me of, uh, of Roscoe Perry's two kids that we knew from Miami." And he's uh, he's one of those guys that <coughs> that's electric. So he's going to be, I think, outstanding. He'll get a chance to do that. Offense, defense, we're going to play, we're going to play him on defense. We'll start him on defense, and, of course, he'll be in our return game. Brian King, Brian's here now, again, out of junior college. He's out of Hutts Junior College, a really good junior college in Kansas. He, most of the junior college kids will have two years to play. He'll have three years to play three. So I think, uh, again, a little older player, he'll be a good addition for us from that standpoint. Trey Mohair. Trey's out of uh, Dallas, or excuse me, Denton, Denton, Ryan. Excuse me, I think Denton signed about uh, 10 guys today. I think they actually had the player of the year signed out of, uh, out of Denton to uh, Florida State. <clears throat> but he is, uh, I watched uh, Trey play basketball the other night, and Trey is an outstanding athlete. The thing that really can impress me the most about him is his poise. Really have a lot of poise on the court. He's a playmaker. I know people you run into in recruiting and say, boy, I can't believe you got Trey Moore. I can't, can't believe you got that guy. He's really good. And uh, so we got excited about him. Uh, he, was, he actually was special teams player of the year in their district. Uh, Skyler Nelson, Skyler from here at Alamo Heights High School. Uh, Skyler's a linebacker. He's a, in line, if he gets big, he might be a defensive end. He'll come here and start out as a linebacker. He's a two-time district MVP. Uh, again, we, uh, we're very excited about Skyler and what he brings to the table because that's a need that we do have. Uh, Maurice Pouillard, uh, again, he's a part of that Blinn junior college team, that, that uh, kind of that tradition they have there as a, as a corner for them. And, uh, again, an outstanding young man, outstanding student, and he'll be a part of, I think, 17 wins while he's at, at Blinn. H.B. Rosser, uh, really had a, had, a, had a good time. I uh, went to see with uh, Coach Brown, went to see H.B. Uh, play basketball. I didn't know what to expect. H. You know, Coach said they had some good players. And, I'll tell you, that thing was electric. It looked like a junior college out there. Guys were running and slam dunking and, and monster dunking. And, I mean, it's like I hadn't really had seen high school guys to do that. But HB is really a good athlete. He's, uh, he, he controls the court, smart, and uh, I think an outstanding, uh, be an outstanding signee for us. They were district champions his uh, final two seasons. And, as I said, he's an outstanding athlete, outstanding basketball player. Mason Russell. Mason, again, one of those offensive linemen, 6'6", 290, one of those guys that we uh, desperately needed. He was a first-team all-conference player, had a lot of opportunities scholarship-wise, and, and uh, I think, uh, you know, that uh, dad came to San Antonio, loved it, uh, and we had an opportunity to be in his home, a great home, and again, he'll be, uh, be tremendous, especially for what he plays. A little older player, experience, and he has some size. Trevor, Steason, Trevor Stevens, uh, tight end. He's got has size, he, got, he can run. Uh, Trevor's from Friendswood, of course, is in Houston. He's in his PALS programs, which he mentors uh, it's a mentoring program for children, and it does a great job with that. He's very active in a lot of other things other than just athletics. Uh, Brian Vaughn from uh, Fort Worth. He's a uh, running back, wide receiver, slash guy. He's kind of like a Percy Harvin, if you remember that guy from Florida. He can do a lot of things. 
He's extremely fast. He's a 4-3, 4-4 four, four, four guy. He's on a 400-meter relay team. And uh, we definitely got faster with, uh, with him. A great, uh, great uh, young man. Uh, Dan Winter. Uh, Dan was, uh, just came in, I guess, last weekend. Dan was a running back, fullback, uh, early in his career. Then, that, then became a defensive end. We got to be about two, uh, 270. And uh, he's a very bright young man, wants to be an engineering here. He had a 1330, I think, on his SAT coming out of high school. He's uh, one of the tutors they have in the tutoring program and has an outstanding GPA there, and, and he's, uh, he actually just tutors in math. It's kind of what I did when I was coming to college. I was, I was one being tutored. I didn't tutor, but, but uh, he's, he's a pretty sharp guy. Uh, Charles Wart. Charles is uh, from here, if near the city. He's from New Braunfels, obviously, New Braunfels High. Uh, he's one of Dave Campbell's top 300. Uh, he, Charles has been an impact player. He's, uh, he's uh, he just got a knack of making plays. And uh, again, very exciting opportunity for him. He's a first team, all district player, all area player. And uh, you know, he was, uh, I think Dan selected, uh, on you guys selected him pretty high on your all area team. But he had a great prospect. I think he grew up in England for a part of his career, <laughs> young career. And uh, but he was a lot of fun to recruit. Yeah, man, kind of interesting. I mean, Marcus Wright. Marcus was a running back at uh, Reagan High School. Some of you might remember Marcus. And uh, had a great career there, 7,000 yards, uh, 85 scores. He's uh, had a, it's in a record. It may still be a record. I don't know. 3,300 yards, maybe a record. I don't know. You guys might know that. 9.4 yards uh, per carry, and um, his 5A offensive player of the year. He's in the Army All Star game, but he's uh, a unique rule. Maybe you know about, but he graduated from Georgia Tech. And when you graduate, you can actually transfer and not lose a year. So he'll out be immediately eligible. He won't be here till summer. But uh, he's uh, again, we're excited about uh, what he brings to the, brings to the table. He's not big from a standpoint of uh, tall. About, he's about the same height that Barry Sanders was, but very powerful, very well put together, and uh, be a great addition for us. I'm going to open it up for questions, I guess, that's uh, what we want to do here. Yes, sir. Thanks, Coach. Um, now, with, of course, with your resume, winning a championship at the University of Miami, you've coached elite NFL talent. Um, I just wanted to ask, is the school heading in the right direction to build a reputation like that? And how long do you think before we can make a major impact in the college football world? Well, I think we had a major impact last year in the college football world. We had a set of attendance records, uh, you know, with uh, young kids with won games and those type of things. I think we said, you know, had an impact. Now, as far as winning games, as far as winning championships, uh, I think uh, what we're going to do, we're going to graduate these kids and we're going to win championships. I mean, that kind of wraps it up there. And uh, I think that, that came from the athletic director, so I'm just repeating what she said. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that a, that a, good, uh, a good thing to say. <laughs> but seriously, uh, we should win championships here. Now, when uh, I think uh, I, I did a game for ESPN with South Florida. This is year 12, and they were ranked number two in the country at the time. Well, that's 12 years. We've got a few years before we're there. But, again, we'll be in two years or five years or one. We don't know. We're just going to compete to win every game and recruit to win every game. And I think these kids are, are those type kids. But we want to recruit to win championships and, and obviously win football games and graduate. And the other thing we want to do, we want to represent our, our school well. You know, we want to be out in the public and represent guys, and I think we'll do a good job of that also. Can you just talk about the uh, difference, you know, having a third class come in? You know, last year you were just playing anybody that could play, uh, like you said, freshmen, redshirt freshmen. What difference does, you know, another group of guys coming in in terms of, you know, depth, uh, lineup choices, some of those yeah. things, what difference does this uh, third group make? Well, it's, it's kind of a, it's a blank slate. Guys have, that have opportunities. I think the thing it does, it makes things more competitive in practice. You know, you've got guys that uh, played last year, they may have, they're going to have to earn their job, they're going to have to keep their job and compete. And it's going to be more, much more competitive, which will make us better. And I think the thing it does, it, uh, it uh, brings a better quality of athlete number on our, on our campus. And I think the thing that, uh, again, as I said, we raised our bar, but uh, we had to do that, need to do that. And in other words, we, we, uh, we compete against some pretty good people, you know. Um, but we beat some pretty good people. We beat some Big Ten schools, some, some Big 12 schools on some kids. And, and uh, again, but, all, but in the same token, we also lose some kids, too, because uh, they, well, they got other places they can go. And uh, so it's, it's going to be much more competitive, I think, in practice, which is good, a good thing. And uh, the thing about us as coaches, we don't care who plays. I don't care if he's a freshman or whatever. But uh, just compete and, uh, and show us what you can do. 
Larry, I know you just do. talked about Marcus Wright a while ago, but mm -hmm. for those of us who remember him, uh, you know, he was really an unbelievable back, you know, when he played at Reagan, as you mm -hmm. said. He yeah. wasn't, very, wasn't very tall, but, boy, he was prolific and strong and just real fast. My question to you is how, how much video did you see of him, and if you did, what, do you, what is it about his game, and does he still have that burst, you know, and that, that he was noted for, you know, when he played here? You know, I, I think I didn't see I didn't see video of, of uh, high school. I saw a video of Georgia Tech. But you know, if you're familiar with Georgia Tech, which you are, they don't you know one back's not going to carry a lot of times. So he's he's a blocker, he's a ball blocker, and he's a ball carrier receiver. But I think again, uh, the coaches that know him, you know, Travis and other guys that were here, know him well, and uh, really sold on him. And uh, is 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 uh, the coach Reagan is sold on him. So you know, I think we've got to you know that that was enough for me because what I saw from Georgia Tech and talking to the coaches at Georgia Tech, who I know well, you know, they think he's pretty good. And uh, it's just an op opportunity for him to come back home. And uh, he's got his degree from Georgia Tech, and now come, to come and play. And it's a one-year deal. He can play one year for us, which is a good, which is, that's okay. I, I'm on a one-year contract, so one year, <laughs> one year of a good player, that's good. Coach, how much easier was it to uh, sell this thing after you have a season under your belt to those prospective recruits? I think back about that, and, and I don't see how we did it without a season because it's how can you, who do you believe? And, you know, I think the thing that, uh, that you see is the, the, the university and President Romo and the vision that, that Lynn Hickey had, that's what we sold. And uh, it was, a, and it was a somewhat a good sell because we knew it was going to happen come to fruition. But now with having a season, saying, so, hey, this thing is for real. Plus, you know, there are really going to be people come see it. Maybe record-setting crowds and, and 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 this thing. I've had I've had coaches that, that came to some of our games. And coach, I you know I go to games at A and M wherever, but said the the atmosphere here is electric. It's electric, and it really is. And you think about for where we were, but having that behind us, having that in the bank, really I think made a huge difference. And also I think with our administration and, and our fans, our uh, everybody's involved. Look at it and say, oh, this is kind of exciting. You know, yeah, I'm, I kind of want to get involved with this. I, had, I can't tell you how many people said, you know, I came to a game last year. Said I've already got my season tickets. I bought, I bought a suite. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting into this thing. But you know, it's uh, we're not trying to put anybody out of business. I mean, Texas is going to be Texas and A&M and so on and so forth, and that's great. But, but we just want to be the best we can be. And I tell you, the staff here has done a phenomenal job of, of putting together not just the, the football part of it, it's just the, the whole game day experience. And, and I think. Uh, the uh, the Alamo Dome. They've asked. Well, they want. They want to sign a 25-year contract with us. They they also kind of see too. This could be kind of a neat deal. And uh, but no, having a season, and game and, and playing pretty good. You know, we we were competitive in about every game. I, a couple we weren't on the road, but we were pretty doggone competitive, even though we lost some games at home. And there's some we could we could have been uh, six we were six or seven wins this year easily, maybe more than that. I really didn't want to win more than four because you win too many early. Sets the bar too high. <laughs> so we just shut it down at four. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, we want to win them all. Coach, yes, uh, what are your expectations, one, going into a new conference, and also from your second-year players um, for this program? Well, you know, the, the second-year players for the program, it's kind of interesting you say that because I looked at my list from, from a year ago, and here's the guys missed weights. There's about nine guys, and, you know, they missed, and this guy missed, and that guy missed. And uh, kind of the, uh, the the overall comment after last season with more coach, these 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 25 year old men, these 23 three year old men, they're pretty strong, and you know we're gonna have to, you know we're gonna have to get get in the weight room, and they're excited about doing those things, and that's the thing that excites me, that they are they are they are really doing a good job in the weight room right now. We've had one guy miss a day, and one guy miss another day, but they're they're into it. Charlie Dudley and, and Travis Roos they did a phenomenal job in the weight room, but but uh, I think the thing you see is. They're sold. You know, they're buying in. And if they buy in, we'll be just fine. If you don't buy in, you probably it's probably not going to work for you. It's too hard to work. But you've got to buy in, and we've got guys buying in. And we've had, you know, that's, that's I guess, every program for sure for us. Because I think uh, if you're a football player then, and you're 18 years old and you get pushed around by a 22-year-old, you know, uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to get that thing straightened out. You know, I'm going to go to work, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 22 someday. Oh, just one more question, Coach. Yes, sir. Um, San Antonio can be a great sports town. I mean, the enthusiasm of the fans behind the Spurs and even behind this program by setting those records. For the few who haven't gone to a UTSA game or are still skeptical about it, what are they missing out on if they don't go to a Roadrunner football game? Well, they're missing out on a great experience. And uh, I know uh, we're playing in – I, I, I thought about it sometimes. We've played, uh, you know, in 1 o'clock games in September. And uh, it's, it's 72 degrees. It never rains where we are. 
It's a great atmosphere. I, but, but it's a whole experience. It really is. Our students have been terrific, we, you know, and uh, we just need to keep cultivating that and having a great product for them. But they're missing out on, on a lot of fun. And it's right here in your own back door. And also, I think it's an affordable ticket. You know, it's something that's, uh, you know, the Spurs, what a great product they have. But, you know, it's, it's hard to get a ticket to the Spurs. And I know they have some, but and even parking's a little bit difficult to pay for that. But, but we've got an affordable ticket. Uh, the thing I like is uh, we're at 1604 and 10. We've got 30, 30, 31,000 students now, but we're playing in downtown San Antonio. We're, we're, we're San Antonio's team. We're, we're, we're all over the city. We're catering to the city, and we want to be their team. But again, we have to do our part, and we're going to do our part to really make sure that it's an, it's an exciting event. And I'll tell you, our staff has done a phenomenal job making sure you go there. It's, it's, it's a fun deal. Coach, can you just talk uh, specifically about the junior college crew? Uh, one of your assistants had told me that this was the year to really load up in that area. And obviously, uh, numerous of those guys that I talked to said, hey, you know, they're not bringing us in to sit on the bench or anything. And, and obviously, you touched on the competing part a little mm -hmm. bit. But those guys in particular, the mindset to bring in that many and what you're expecting uh, from those guys in particular. Well, I think the thing is, you look at the numbers, it is not, uh, n n but half those guys are from Texas, so that's kind of, you know, kind of makes, makes me feel pretty good. It's not like going way out uh, on the stretch. But I like the thing that, uh, like any program, you recruit good football players. And I tell you, once they come in and, and, and they're around our players and, and make the official visit and, and through the university and see, see what, what we have, <coughs> pardon me, uh, it's, a, it's a good sell. And, uh, but they are. They're coming here to play. And uh, most junior college players, they've got, what, two years left? And, and they don't want to go in and compete for a job, which will make our guys here make us better. But I think the thing, again, you've got a little older player, a little play at a little different level. And uh, so I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a good, it's a good fit for us. Did that answer your question, Dan? I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, one of the things that had been brought up, that it also kind of you get those scholarships in and get them out in two years, and then it kind of balances things out with the classes, you know, and instead of graduating that big chunk at once. Was that part of the thinking at all? Or uh, Yeah, it was part of the thinking. And I think the thing that, uh, that I don't do real good with the numbers. Travis does a great job, and Neil does a great job of, hey, coach, we got this, and these guys are gone. I said, wow, I didn't realize that. Gosh, and we're going to have a team here in a couple of years. So, you know, but they do a great job with numbers, and they kind of keep me, keep me abreast of that stuff. But they, uh, uh, the thing that, that I do, let's, let's recruit and let's, let's win now. Let's do the best we can, recruit the best players now, you know. And uh, it kind of all seems to work out. You know, we're kind of worried about over-signing and stuff like that. And I said, let's recruit players. Usually that balances out, and, it, and it normally it does. We had, it, and, and so it worked out good for us. Our numbers are good. And, uh, but, yeah, that's uh, – you know, that'll be a concern in a couple of years. It will be because you're going to lose a pretty good piece of your class. What about um, the incoming freshmen? You know, you, you, you've got an established core with the guys that are here, incoming junior college guys mm -hmm. that are going to, you know, expect to play pretty heavily. O of the incoming freshmen, are there any guys in particular that you think are going to be able to come in and really battle for playing time? Well, I think they all – I think several will. You know, you think about, again, what we're, what we're playing. And I – I think uh, Zach, uh, Zach Conk, I know we talked about that, that, that he, he's probably going to redshirt, but he wants to redshirt. His dad's a coach. His dad knows that's a good thing. And, uh, but he wants to come in. He wants to be coached by Travis. He wants to learn. And uh, I think that's good. But I think the other, the other guys, I just tell them, I said, hey, I've never promised anybody you'll start. Never promised anybody a lot of playing time. I, hey, come in, compete for a job. We don't care who plays. We don't care. Just come in and compete for a job. And, uh, you know, we had, uh, and there will be some of these guys that will definitely be on the field. But we expect that. And hopefully there will be some we can redshirt. We, we redshirt this year two really good receivers. I mean, those guys are, those guys are good. What about kind of going retroactively and maybe some guys, let's say you have a guy that played a lot as a true freshman last year and he gets beat out for a job. Have you given any thought to maybe red, uh, redshirting any of those guys to kind of spread things out a little bit? Or I, I think, yes, definitely some thoughts of that. And sometimes you redshirt a sophomore. And, you know, some, some teams – They'll play everybody as a freshman. They'll redshirt them all as a sophomore. And I'm talking about a Michigan or somebody like that that's established. I have thought about that. But I think the other part of that, too, along with that, Dan, is what you're saying. Some guy comes in and beating this guy out. The thing we've got to do as a coaching staff, we've got to really work hard on our, our team chemistry, our camaraderie. We've got to be a, be a team. We'll have good football players. Now, I'm not saying we'll have better football players than everybody else. We'll have good football players. But now, uh, as you said, it's like, well, who's that guy? You know, what's he, what's he going to do? Are they bring this guy in? I thought I was the, you know. So we got to make sure now our guys understand that this is major college football. It's come in, compete for your job, and, 
And I think as a coaching staff and as our team leadership develops, they've got to really, you know, be a part of that too, of really keeping that camaraderie, to, uh, camaraderie together and, and becoming a, a team. Coach, with this 50-50 split of um, offense and defense, yeah. what would you say would be the true identity of this team? Will that develop this season, or are you going to establish it from day one? I think it'll have to develop. I really do. You know, we've uh, – I, I like our defensive front. We've got some good defensive front people come back. I think we've got a lot, a lot of competition in the offensive line. I think uh, I really like – you know, uh, Eric Sosa did a phenomenal job last year. Uh, you know, and I and I told him this for a, for a player. I don't know if any programs really put – the game on his shoulders as much as, as we did him. And, uh, but uh, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, we, we've got some really talented wide receivers. It's going, it's just going to be competitive. Who steps up? Uh, I don't know. I think the thing that we've got to try to do is, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, if it's, if they got two points, we got to score three. If they got 49, we got to score 48. No, 51. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We've got to, uh, you know, it's, just, it, it's going to develop. It's going to all develop. Larry, just talk, if you could talk just a little bit more uh, specifically about the offensive line. I know last mm -hmm. year, you know, we talked about how, of all the units on the team, how that's because there's so much physical strength involved right. and older guys and stuff. Can you talk about how you think you've maybe shored up the offensive line position, adding to the core that you already had? Well, I think so, yes. Without question, the guys we've added, uh, again, as I mentioned, is the junior college players are – they're really, really solid players, and uh, they've got to come in, and they're going to make the guys here better because just the, co the competition there, and also get in the weight room and those type of things. But I like uh, I like our offensive line, the guys we have coming back. We just got to spend an additional year, and Coach Marshall's done a great job coaching those guys. Now let's see what these junior college guys can do. We're bringing them in here co to compete for a job, and that's why that's why they come because they they only got a short short window. And I tell you, this thing has gone fast. I mean, this is my what this, this is what third recruiting class. And it's like, wow, is, uh, you said the honeymoon's over for, for me? I mean, it's gone fast, and uh, those guys with two years to play, I mean, they're going to do, they're gonna have to get it done right now. Uh, this is the last one, Coach. What is the best memory you had for this past season? What was the most enjoyable part of it for you? Most enjoyable part? Uh, probably the uh, most uh, – Point memory for a coach is block field goal that we didn't win the game. That's what you, you always remember as a coach. You remember those bad things that happened, you know. But I think, uh, you know, I don't know if there's even really one good memory. I think maybe the best memory, one of them is coming out that first game and seeing, you know, 56, 57,000 people there. You know, I don't know if it'd be anybody there, you know, first game out. A lot to do in San Antonio, Texas. I mean, you you know, and have that many people come out and support our team, our program, our school, our players. I mean, I mean, it, it was pretty electric. But that, that was a great memory for, for me. And, of course, it's been a few years since I've, I've coached also. And, uh, but, no, it's, it was a really definitely an exciting, exciting season. And uh, to see us be able to, to compete like we did uh, week in, week out, especially at home. We had uh, one of our goals was to win the win on the road. We went to Benice, and uh, Benice is a pretty good program. And uh, we did, as the year went on, we really stepped our game up. We had a chance to win that football game. You know, we lost by, well, I think, three, had a touchdown call back, and, and, uh, and I missed a field goal. But we were competitive against a, against a pretty good program. And that's that's where we've got to go. We're going to have to play, uh, have a great offseason, but play well every week to be competitive with the teams we've got to play. Because, again, the bar has been lifted up a little bit. I just uh, really, again, I can't say enough about our coaching staff, the job they've done. They're, they're, they're uh, tremendous coaches, tremendous people. And, uh, again, it's just been a, a pleasure to be around them. As I said, this has been a fun year recruiting just to be around them. And the way they evaluate, the way they, they, they see talent, the way they, they work. And now we're going into the, – and then the fun thing about football coaching, too, now it's the next phase. You never have anything. You stop. You're still recruiting. Now next year we've got a junior day coming up and so on. But also now we get to, you know, get to have a chance to be back with our players. We get to go to the weight room. We get the offseason running. Uh, spring practice will be starting after spring break. Hopefully you'll be out there to see some of that. And uh, spring game, spring – I mean, it's just a – but it's a fun thing because it changes. You know, you put on a different hat. And uh, – we're getting ready to do that right now. Thank you very much. Appreciate you.